Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel, The Leopards Go Wild. That's us, the leopard family, on the road exploring our beautiful backyard here in New Zealand. The far north is a special place for us. It's remote, it's isolated, the water's so clear and warm, and unless you're here at Christmas time, it's very quiet most of the year. We had an incredible stay up in the far, far north of New Zealand, exploring Spirits Bay, Taputaputa Bay, the giant Tepaki sand dunes, Cape Rianga, 90 mile beach. We saw loads of fish swimming off the coast, wild horses roaming free. We ate beautiful meals, we swam in the crystal clear water, and we even caught some fish. We can't wait to share our time up here with you in a longer video than what we'd normally make, but we reckon the top is so special it deserves a long vlog. But right now, we'll jump to Pukanui where our adventure and this episode begins. Hey everyone, well we have just spent the last couple of nights here at the Pukanui Holiday Park. It's pretty far north, it means we've got a way shorter drive today. Planning on making this video quite a long one, we might just cover the whole top of the north, very very tip of the North Island, so it should be a very exciting video. It's beautiful up here. It's a, a beautiful day today, we've got a good forecast. It's pretty remote and isolated, so camping here has meant we've been able to fill up with water, dump our tanks, and um, have some really nice long hot showers, because we've kind of been away from easy access to water for a while, so it was good to be here for a couple of nights. It's only 45 bucks too for our whole family with the NZMCA discount, so Pukanui Holiday Park's been a good stopover for us. But we're just hooking up now, and then we'll be on the road. And the kids have really enjoyed, there's some like farmyard animals here, so they've been walking around the ponies and feeding the pigs, and what else? The pheasants, the sheep, the chickens, and the pigs, and the <laughs> cat. <laughs> cat, and the ponies, which are just around there. Good to be alive, good to be alive, I'm gonna run down a busy city. I'm going far, you'll see a star on the concrete. Had to stop off for a trusty steak, bacon, and cheese pie. This is the last dairy to cull. <laughs> what about you, kids? What have you, uh, oh, pie, lollies, drink? This road's been so quiet. We had no one behind us so far, which is, I guess, we are and going to a dead end, aren't we? So. But yeah, it's an easy drive. I'm going where the wild hearts run free. Lose myself in all the mystery. I'm shining bright. Oh, 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 oh. dancing in the light. Oh, 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 it's good to be alive. From the turn off, you got 16 kilometers of gravel, Walking and it was a bit rough. was quite the tow in, that's for sure that road was pretty corrugated, it could definitely do with a, um, a grader going through there, but we've made it and I just love it here. Like always, we just left the truck and went for a wander around to find where we would like to park. Cool, well we're all on spot, got our little fence here we can use as a washing line, and a nice and private view up to that beautiful hill hill up there. Once we were all nice and level with the caravan, it was off to check out the beach, see what the waves were doing and remind ourselves how awesome this place is. It is so good to be back up here. There's a few people camping in the campground but the beach, not a soul the whole way I can see anyway. Not one person. There's a sting there's a stingray just in the um, in the waves here. With the 
island sitting in the middle here, it pretty much gives you two beach options to swim at. The smaller beach definitely feels a little bit safer and shallower for swimming if it's a bit rough at the main beach. Sweet team, well tonight we are having some pitta pits. It's a really good camping meal because pitta pit bread lasts for ages without going off. So you can kind of keep it in the caravan for two or three weeks with no issues. We don't really need to eat pitta pits this early into our trip, but kids have been getting into mushrooms lately. So we've got a few mushrooms, we've got some venison steak, some homemade coleslaw, some leftover mung beans from Pad Thai last night. Should be a good dinner, I reckon. Thanks, Dad, for the venison steak. This is the, the last of it going on our pitta pits tonight. Been delicious, I know you're watching. I love venison steak. I reckon venison is one of my favorite meats. It's a very low fat meat though, so you've got to be quite careful when you're cooking it because it can dry out if you overcook it. What I've got for dinner is pitta pit with coleslaw, mushrooms, cauliflower and onions, an egg and some salad stuff. This girl is very well catered for, at least most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> You gonna save some for mum and dad? Nah, not a chance. Kids obviously love the venison, dad, so they're not saving much for us. Yum. Another gorgeous evening to eat our dinner outside. Short coming, shortly coming to an end. His old mate wants to sit on his own eating dinner. Good family dinner, eh, Toby? Yeah. Awesome. I feel just like a sailboat. I don't know where I'm headed. But you can't make the wind blow from a sail. I've seen the sun I felt the rain on my skin I've been lost and found Mostly I've been waiting Oh, I'm out in the waves And I'm hoping and praying Please let this wind blow me home Most times I feel just like a sailboat mm. Planning to do a spot of fishing today down at the beach, might go out onto the rock It's a bit of a cool wind picking up though So the kids are so into their cooking, they made these pancakes from scratch cooking them all up with some leftover bananas, they're so good How's the pancakes? Good. Mmm, so good. Yeah. Thanks for coming to Delicious. Do you not know how to use a knife and fork? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go fishing on the rocks. We talked to some other people and they didn't get much luck off the rocks. Catch me a fish. Hope Show Dad so. how to fish. <laughs> Whoa. After seeing all of those kahawai and the birds working out off the point, we were feeling pretty hopeful that we were going to be able to catch some fish. Now I have never seen so many fish working away like that in the water. Pretty cool to be able to see it with the drone. 
This picture looks really good from far away, but when you get close, it gets better. <laughs> I think after all the luck that Toby had when we were camping out at Mai Tai Bay, catching all those snappers off the rocks, I think he's hopefully will have the same kind of luck here, eh Toby? Yeah. I'm better at fishing off rocks than off the beach. We keep waking up to these beautiful blue sky days and then the cloud kind of rolls on in again. Apparently after watching Weather Watch, a New Zealand weather um, forecast, apparently it's something to do with the warm sea temperature at this time of the year. Helps make cloud. At least there is no wind today though, the sea's very very flat. I'm pretty sure I'm hurt At least I know I'm speaking But I feel like a fool Cause I can't hear you listening mm -hmm. But I'm not giving up Oh no, I'm gonna move on forward I'm gonna raise my sail God knows what I'm headed toward Oh, I'm out in the waves and I'm hoping and praying Please let this wind blow me home and Night after night there's an empty horizon My God, do I feel so alone Sometimes life most times I feel just like a sailor. Well, we caught a couple of little trevally and all we seem to get were these little bites that would flick our line. One thing's for sure though, that it was very beautiful and peaceful to be out there on that little island at low tide fishing. The only difference after some lunch at the caravan, the kids decided to hop in the stream and paddle their way down to the beach because it was so sunny and warm. We thought we'd go for a swim and I took the rod back down to throw out, but mostly to play in the water. <laughs> Woohoo! Had to jump over that one pretty high. Look, here comes another good one. So clean, look at it. There aren't too many places around where the water clarity is this good, it's like you're in a bath. So while we were out swimming, I had cast my fishing rod. I walked it pretty far out to get it into deeper water and then I just forgot about it. After not having much luck earlier in the morning, or previous trips here, I was doubtful we'd catch a fish. So we swam and enjoyed the beautiful water. If I was older, anyone but me If I was chasing down every daydream Maybe everything would be different Maybe you would be missing me There's a fool inside my heart making plans And there's a lot of things I don't understand I'm not a wise man the line in the water for a while hopefully it's a, a snapper but it's probably a big cow wire i think So first up we were onto a pretty good sized kahawai but we threw the rod back out to quickly hook onto a quite massive trevally Let's get that. Mate, 
Mate, that is a decent sized trevally. Woo -hoo -hoo. Yum. Absolutely stoked on these two fish. Uh, there's going to be some meat to put in the freezer, I think, with these ones. That's a pretty good indication of how big that trevally is. It's way bigger than this chopping board. So time to fill up them up and get as much meat off of these fish as we can. The time lapse wasn't working when I was filleting that, but that's pretty transparent. Good, good filleting. Kahawai is definitely a fish that you want to eat fresh. Trevally freezes pretty well, and there was plenty of meat on these fish, enough for three meals for our family, which we enjoyed the first of that night. Well, there's that fish filleted. Definitely a good couple of meals in there for our family. Cool, and tonight we're going to have that trevally with a bit of kawaii and panko breadcrumbs and fry them with a salad bag and some wraps. Yum. Wraps are a favourite for our kids. An easy and affordable meal. We always get the 15 pack for $4.00. They're a little bit smaller, but it does the job just as good. How's it, Toby? Real good. Is that? Uh huh. I don't know. Devon. And after such a successful day fishing and a beautiful evening out there, I thought I'd go and check out the rod and enjoy the serenity. The next morning when we woke up, some wild horses had wandered onto the beach area in front of the campsite and you know how much I love horses, so I ran down to, with the GoPro to get some video of them. They didn't seem so worried about me, I love watching them especially because they were free. Cool, well because this is a longer episode we are packing up from Spirits Bay today. Had a little bit of rain overnight, a bit of cloud around, uh, but we're going to head not too geographically far but over to Taputaputa Bay. I heard from our friend Dan that the road in is quite corrugated, but it's only about five kilometres of gravel to get down quite a decent hill to another beautiful beach. This place definitely is up there as one of my favourites. Reminds me a little bit of um, Puraco Nui down in the Catlins with pristine beach and nature and you've got they got the cliffs there but you've got the big bluffs and things like that up here so it's another uh, pretty magical spot out here just as isolated and remote beautiful what did you find how did you find this place Riley um it was great why I got something in my eye and um, there's wild horses and the beach is so nice for swimming even though it's quite dumpy waves but it's so clear and it's been nice because the sun's been out yeah it's been pretty warm and sunny here Just, even today it's a bit cloudy but it's still very warm stop shaking the floor mat on me get out child all of the water out here says boil first although the water seems to run very clear from the taps and like most dock camps around New Zealand now they have a boil water first notice. I think they generally are treated but they're not treated for every kind of thing. Uh, so one of the ways that we save water because we fill up obviously of fresh drinking water here is we just like take our jug over to the tap and we um, use that for dishes water, we use it for coffee, we use it for anything that we're going to cook and that actually saves quite a significant amount of water if you're trying to save water for a week uh, just filling it with dishes water from the tap rather than out of the tanks. I was looking for a bit of information about this spot this is a really big camping ground, this is kind of the closest to the beach but there's like several paddocks that go back up this road where you are allowed to camp. And today is the 23rd of March and you can see that it is very very quiet and there is a lot of room here. For us it's an expensive stay here considering at Pukanui Holiday Park where we just came from we had hot showers, power, dump station, water, rubbish and recycling for $45 a night. Although this site is pretty isolated. Unfortunately for us with the dock pass it does not work at the three most northern campsites. Rāraua, 
Spirits Bay and Saputaputa, you're not allowed to use your pass here, so you do have to pay the full rates. There's no discount either, so it gets a little bit expensive for five of us. There's a bit of a toilet block behind me there. There's some uh, long drop toilets and some cold showers. And there's also two flush showers as you enter just there. Two flush ones. Oh look, another closed walking track. What do you know? Disappointing for us to yet again see another closed walking trail in a pristine location. This just goes to show you how much water pulls up on this roof because of the way that it's sealed. It's like a swimming pool up there which to me just equals a disaster waiting to happen one day. There's a lot of water coming down. So we've never had a leak but there's a lot of silicon over the roof joins of our caravan which seem to make large holding pools of water which waterfall off when we raise the jockey wheel or when we lower it. Well, we are in the truck. We're just uh, hitting the road now. It's a pretty awesome spot, this one. Pretty sad when it's um, so far away to get to these places and it's just not really sure when you're going to get back to them. Definitely enjoyed it. You kids have a good time here? Yeah, definitely. So we were off up the road to Taputaputa Bay. Only about 35 kilometre drive, but that would take us close to an hour over the corrugated gravel roads. I'm glad this road is quiet because I'm spending most of the time avoiding potholes and big corrugations. Which isn't too hard to do, the road's quite wide, but... It wasn't too long until we came to the last settlement of Waitiki Landing. This place was much different since our last stop before the COVID lockdowns. Wait, well this is Waitiki Landing, get some gas, some groceries here. It's uh, 15 k's from the Cape, but we're going to go grab a pie and a drink I think. It takes about half an hour to drive here from Spirits Bay. Well that was a bit sad, there was like nothing going on in that shop. There was hardly any drinks, hardly anything and there was empty. A little bit of fish bait, but there is a little campground right next door that you can park up. It says on all the website closed and I think that's from COVID, but it is open so you can camp there. After leaving the shop empty handed, we were off. This last section to the Cape was gravel until 2010. Hard to believe that State Highway 1 wasn't fully tar sealed until 14 years ago. Pretty handy, this is a new dump station just opened a few months ago. This is the turn off to the Tepaki Giant Sand Dunes. There's not even a sign there, so we just, uh, we knew that it was on there from the app, so we're going to dump our, dump our stuff here. So no fresh water, there's not even water to rinse your toilet cassette out. So luckily we've been pretty much using the toilets at the campsites anyway, so it was a pretty easy dump. The last section of the drive feels really cool as you follow the spine of the hill all the way to the turn off to Taputaputa Bay. downhill pretty much went down that in first gear very steep um, but we've made it that was like going over White's Bay I reckon pretty similar be good climb out well the sun's come out in full force we'll go find where we want to park brakes smell a little bit hot on the old caravan which is big hill though there's a couple of spaces to camp here, in the main space or along the estuary. We decided we'd go for the beach view, but it was a bit of a complicated and uneven site to get onto with the bollards and even the slope. But we got plenty of blocks out and maybe needed a ladder once we were finally level to get into the caravan. Just about going to need a ladder to get in, but we're level. I don't know if the leg has any type of touch on the ground. <laughs> We do have a very high step, but let's have a look at our view. Oh, Toby's making some lunch. We've run out of bread. Pretty good view. We were kind of relying a little bit on that Waitiki Landing store, at least having some bread or some milk. Nothing. No bread, no milk, no butter, 
no cheese. Um, it was like that last time we came up too. They did have frozen bread a few years ago in a freezer, but I, so much potential for a good shop there, but maybe things just don't get sold, I don't know. So this is night number five for us. I oh, know, this is actually night number seven. So this is night number seven for us since we did our grocery shop in Kaitaia because we did two nights at Pukanui and then we've done four nights Spirits Bay and we've got three more nights up here. Still got plenty of fresh food, which is good, although the fridge is starting to run a little bit low. Got avocados ripening, um, got cabbage, cauliflower, some apples. Mushrooms, tomatoes. Pretty easy to get a good couple of weeks worth of groceries in these fridges. Pretty awesome spot to eat a bit of leftover food. Some leftover pitta pits. Amazing how quickly the weather can change in a place like this from blue skies to becoming pretty well overcast. These boys have been down here making fishing traps and digging dams for about four hours now. And we'll go see how they're getting on. The tide is coming in, so that water's forcing its way through their, through their dams. What's happening, boys? The tide's taken over. What is this? Whoa! Whoa, who got that snapper? We found it. Nothing like playing with dead carcasses, eh? Not our snapper. So Toby met Liam camping up here. These two boys were in their element. Fishing, exploring, building, playing. They spent about four hours down here trying to make a fish trap. But the tide changing, I guess they learnt that water will just push their sand away. The water is charging in, but what a life, eh? What a life for an eight-year-old to be able to just hang out, digging holes at the beach, building sand castles figuring out solutions to their problems it's good and then we have our Riley Riley who is wild Riley about girl. animals you, you probably know that I really love horses so I've made that um, spare tire into a horse by attaching a rope and putting our picnic mat on as a saddle and so I can ride on it. This horse is quite high, eh? Because we're <laughs> on At uneven the ground. Campsite, I could mount it from the floor, but now I have to climb up onto the bumper. Can you do it from the ground? No, I've tried. Alright, let's go. Let's see this horse ride all going this way. This is short reins. <laughs> get up, horse. And then, I can't get up this way. <laughs> Get your feet in those stirrups, Riley. <laughs> the horse is too big. Some more great imaginative play from our kids. When we came back from summer camp in the US in well, a year and a half ago, uh, we brought one of these scratch maps. I think it's Moana Road. We brought it online at a pharmacy. And now uh, we've been slowly scratching our way off. It's pretty hard to scratch these days. I think it's been a bit weathered sitting by the door. But we decided that we would only scratch places that uh, we've been to in this caravan on this full-time journey. So everywhere else that we had already been, we, we were just going to revisit. So we've been making our way. So we've gone all the way from the bluff now. And we've all the way to Cape Dianga to the top. So yeah, this is a pretty, uh, pretty big day really. We've taken you guys with us from the top, or from the bottom, to the top. We've done the whole length of New Zealand now. Peace. There's still plenty of spots left to um to get to though. Bit hard to scratch these days. We've also met so many of you on that journey. Some of you have come camp with us and parked up for a night or two. And remember, if you see us, come and grab a fridge magnet. We even have some in the truck. So if we're not in the caravan, you see us around there come and say, can I have a fridge magnet? And make sure you get one because we often forget to give them to people. So after all of those kilometres, we're back to the tip of New Zealand. A pretty special place and a very beautiful place. 
Just some more pristine nature where the Tasman Sea and the Pacific Ocean collide. We're up at Cape Deanga. This we're is, up at. So this we're up at, we're up at Cape Deanga. We're going yeah. to the lighthouse and this is the most northern part of New Zealand. We're up at Cape Deanga. This is the... <laughs> <laughs> Made up up to Cape Ranga, Riringa Wairua. Here's the lighthouse, top of the top of the country. For the how many times have we been up here? Three. Who knows? With the spirits at home. That beach over there is called Spirits Bay, where we were just a few days ago. Sometimes the wind blows in the right direction When it's pushing you towards the sunset like a ghost And I know that you'll learn to love the lesson That some things you have to find out on your own Well there we have it team, the top, quite a lot of people around, so never keen to video with the camera when there's lots of people, but it is top of the North Island, we've done it for a second time, a lot more people around, last time we were here was after the lockdown, so there wasn't, the borders were closed and there were no international tourists here, but it's a beautiful spot, I love watching the crashing water, the Tasman Sea smashing into the Pacific, you can watch the waves like crashing into each other, and it's even like a calm day today. Anyway, we're off to the next the next activity. The giant Tepaki sand dunes are way more than you expect. These golden hills of sand like the Sahara Desert are sitting there waiting to be climbed on and boogie boarded down. Man, how amazing do these sand dunes look, eh? Just driving in, it's like yeah, arriving into the Sahara Desert. It's pretty awesome. Sweet, well welcome to the Tipaki Giant Sand Dunes. These things go all the way over to 90 Mile Beach, they're pretty impressive, you can climb up quite high. Uh, last time we were here I did a walk up to the top to where I could see the beach, but it does take a little while and it was definitely nowhere near as hot as it is today, it's pretty warm today. So we were off, boogie boards in hand, ready to find a place to sandboard down these giant sand dunes. The sun will rise long after I Giving up on sleeping Can almost hear the wind outside As loud as my heart is beating The house is quiet, my busy mind Wonders what I'm missing But I'm right where I belong well, It's like a, there's an oasis right in the desert Little no plants growing This is definitely one site you don't expect to see in New Zealand, eh? Giant sand dunes. Once we were back at camp, we thought we'd better get up the hill to soak up some of the beautiful views looking down into our bay. Up here you get to see how beautiful and clear that water is. It was also a good way to get a bit of a sweat going so that we could go for a swim. We were definitely feeling the autumn vibes kicking in, especially when the sun hides behind the clouds. It feels like it goes from 25 degrees to about 10 degrees. I locked in a stare Caught a glimpse of dark Took away a bright Drowning
<laughs> Did you feel that? Water doesn't really feel that safe, so it's us, we're out. You'll notice we stayed in the shallows while swimming. The water didn't quite feel right, so a quick cool off and then we were out. The facilities here are getting very tired and worn, in desperate need for a freshener, but nice to be able to have a cold shower to rinse the sand and the salt water off. Pretty full in the campsite tonight for a Sunday. Thought it was going to be quiet, but and no, it's pretty busy. After seven nights up here, we had a stack of rubbish and recycling, so we decided to hook up and head out. Would have loved to have stayed longer, but it's $56 a night and that adds up after seven days. Since we were spending money though, and we were in the zone, we decided to just keep on spending, so we went back to the Pukanui Holiday Park to get rid of our rubbish, recycling, have hot showers, do the laundry, play with the animals, and it's also a great base to explore and drive 90 Mile Beach. I'm gonna run down a busy city street I'm going far, you'll see a star on the concrete Sing at the top of my lungs, it's good to be alive Whatever was going on there, that's definitely been left for the sand dunes to come in and destroy it 90 Mile Beach is a great way to spend an afternoon. Not very safe for swimming, but great fishing, and you can drive a very long way along this beach, which is recognized as a road. Very easy to find a spot out here just on your own. I'm going where the wild hearts run free. Lose myself in all the mystery. I'm shining bright. Whoa, dancing in the Knocking down walls, standing in my way I'm swinging wide the gates, the world is mine today You should, you should Such an incredible beach, eh? It's pretty disorientating because you're just dry It's the same scene all the way along Although I know further back you've got the bluffs um, and those giant sand dunes but... Ooh, can't even see like where this ends. But then we made it to the end of our drive at Ahipara, where there is a beach entrance or exit. What a fun adventure that drive was. It does make it a 55km drive on the road back to Pukanui after some groceries in Kotaia. Well that was a very cool experience driving down Nine Mile Beach that far. Did you kids have a good time riding on the back of the truck? Yes. yes. Was it fast? Yes. It was fun. The kids were on there for ages. They were saying their legs were sore from just holding on and standing in the same spot so long. Hey Jada. Well thanks everyone for coming along on our adventure at the top of New Zealand. A place few people have the time to venture to and a place that remains mostly untouched and unspoiled. And what a privilege it was to spend seven days up here as a family. This is the longest video I've ever made. What a labour of love. But if you've made it this far I really appreciate you choosing us to watch out of all the other things out there that you could be watching. But we will see you in our next episode. Catch you later.